welcome to the Modern Fairy Sightings Podcast, where we listen to people's fairy encounters. But take heed, we're not talking about winged tinkerbells here. These are real fairies, real encounters that took people like you and I by surprise. Stay a while and hear their stories. My name is Joe Hickey Hall, and I'm a folklore researcher. Dear listener, I hope you're well. There is a lot of division in the world everywhere we look right now. It's an extremely tumultuous time. During the 1990s, I had a very learned esoteric teacher who taught our small group all manner of methods for maintaining well-being, such as meditation and visualisation techniques. And she taught us how to douse and see auras, introduced us to energy medicines, astrology and crystals. She always told us that we'd be helping others in the future because we would see all our systems collapse in our lifetime. Education, health, governmental systems. She said it would be a breakthrough to another way of being for us, for humanity. And far from the man-made artificial overlay on this world that is based on ego and materialism. My next teacher taught me healing and that our physical bodies are just the most dense form of our whole being, our consciousness. He also maintained that we, as a global consciousness, were preparing for a breakthrough into a new heart-centred way of living. I do believe that what we are currently witnessing is the end of the old world. It cannot maintain its full structures where we are headed. As the pillars fall, the immense corruption of those at the helm of decision-making up to now is plain for all to see. We realise the absurdity of material values we've been socialised to uphold. We can no longer ignore the horror and suffering that countless human beings and the natural world have endured throughout the centuries and are still experiencing now. And all for a minority who can sense their final reckoning draws close. Their ship is going down, but don't allow yourself to sink with them. You, dear listener, have something beautiful to offer the world, and now is the time to turn towards that. Help one another, but do not feed the fire. Know that the division that is being sown in every neighbourhood is part of the old world illusion. You will know the way through these turbulent times because it will feel peaceful in your heart when you are doing it. Maintain your focus there and seek others doing the same. These are unprecedented times, within my lifetime anyway, but the wise elders in all indigenous cultures have spoken of these times and how necessary it is for man, in inverted commas, to lose his ego and return to their true nature. That is being at one with the earth, because in all his so-called progress, he forgot that he was never separated. This episode is all about a little boy's encounter in South Wales in around 1982. He met two beings in a wood who tried to show him the workings of this world. The message he walked away with was, we need to protect this planet. He is now in his early 50s and until recently he had never told anyone about this experience. He recently told his sisters and now he's sharing it with us. I hope you enjoy and honour his story as much as I do. I will be back at the end for a chat. Thank you very much, Joe, for being one of the first to really take it serious and being li- a good listener. I think you're a good listener, and you, and you. It's the reason I sort of checked out your show to see if it was right to say it here, yeah, and, and I feel that I can. 
The second one is grill me like hell. <laughs> grill <laughs> like a cop. So because it, it feels important to me to, like I've made notes, it feels important to say it correctly. It is important. And I think I'm in the right place. I'm pretty certain I'm in the right place to say it. I, I totally hear you and thank you very much for, for saying that too. And I and I feel I feel really I feel really honored. I really, really feel very honored that you would share this with me when yeah. I've chosen you know to. how hard it is. Yeah, I've chosen to. I've made a conscious because it's been buried in me for so long. So it, I told no one. Yeah. No one what happened. And it's a total taboo to say that our conversation this evening. It is an absolute taboo in modern society. You will be classed slightly along the bend. How I'm going to explain this, because it's a 40-year-old memory, mm -hmm. and so bits of it have just naturally blurred and bits have kind of fell off. So there's only feelings of it. Of I kind of think this happened. Then, then I'm back on track again with what I remember. So, and I'll explain. It like it was like this. It was like that. To really try and give a uh, to really get the get it across. Uh, okay. So I I think I was 11 years old, and I was in primary school, and I. I think I was in the I was in the summer weeks holiday where I was going to go to high school. I would say I was eleven on the last, so it's 1983. I would I would, I would kind of hedge my bets. Bets it was there, and it was in the summertime of that summer of the six weeks holiday, and that September I was going into high school for the first time, and I was at a place called which is just before Puff Call in South Wales. And that's about 25 miles from Cardiff. Picture the scene. It was a, I'm hedging my bets again. It was a Sunday because a lot of the, the caravan site was very small. It was about 300 caravans. It wasn't very big. And it was, it was the one, and it was rural. But we were in a rural, it had a chip shop. It had a, really dodgy pub and a telephone box you had to queue for to phone my, my nan. You know, it was really back in the day. And um, I would hedge my bets. It was a Sunday even, early evening and it was quiet on the site. It was quiet because a lot of people um, went back to work for Monday. You had, you had a lot of that going on. So the site would go quiet. Mm -hmm. Me and my sister... I'd been out all day playing, playing around. And she, I was 11 and she was nine. And my baby sister was staying at home in the caravan with my parents because she was just too young to go out. So I'd been out playing. And we were at the bottom of the hill by the pub. And you take a left into the fields and into the woods and into the dunes and the beach led to the sea or you take a right on the tarmac road and go back past the pub the shop the chip shop the telephone box and the caravan it's time to go home for tea and we were running a little late and she wanted to go home for tea and i decided to stay out longer so we, we parted ways i went down to the fields and she went carried on up the road back home to the caravan where my parents were and uh, we parted ways. I come for me in a city, so I'm in the fields, I'm in, I'm in a whole different different world. And so I went through this field of, of furs and then there's these deep rutted sand dune pathways that lead down into the forest. And the forest was very boggy. There was like a crooked stream that run through, very muddy. In, in the winter time, and I played on the sand dunes. It was a big, big, huge sand dune, it's like ten foot high. You and you walk through the the path. It's like a very, very old path. 
Like a hollow road, a hollow way. Yeah, it looked like a hollow road, but it was sand dunes because you're coming close to the beach. The beach was only, I don't know, 200 yards further, but there was a wood in between. And so I decided to play in the dunes. And I decided to make a, a face in the sand. I was sculpting. And as I, I remember, I dug out the hole for the mouth and that in turn made the nose for the face. And this is where it begins. I, behind me from the woods, I heard sing-songy voices say, and there was a collection of voices. And it was like jingling, rhyming of, hey, hey, you, come here, you, hey, it's you. Come, come join us. So come, come have fun. It was kind of, like I said before, like that. And it was very beaty, bit rhymy, rappy. And, and it was said in, in a child, children's voice. Because if it had been a man's voice, I would have run. Because it, you, your parents tell you, you do not go near men when you're a child, when they try and talk to you. So it, it, it was children's voices I had heard. And I thought, I, t I turned, and I thought there was children playing in it from the site. There were still kids in the woods playing around. So I stopped what I was doing, and I went to the woods, which was five metres away. It was just right next, right next to each other. And this is where, this is where it all took a left, as it were. I... I got this memory, this feeling that I simply cannot remember this this initial point. But I talked to these voices. I, I believe in some way we had talked and they had said, do you want to see something? Do, let, let us show you something. And I had agreed to it. I said, yeah, sure. I'll, I want to see. So this is just voices now. I went into the woods then, but as I did, everything went absolutely quiet. And I've heard people say that everything went dead quiet and everything, because I've made a, a note of it. Do you know Lord of the Rings, the movie? Do you know when Frodo puts on the ring and he's still in the room, but he's in a different, slightly dimension? It, it was like that. I, I put on the ring, as it were, and I was in a, I was in a, I was in the woods, but also in a glass room. And I could see the woods through the glass, but it was very wa washed out. It was very pale. And they were, they were touching me. I, I had the sensation of being and and this I, I I'm going to have to like sort of say it here. This was not a frightening experience. This I was in inquisitive at this moment in time. This was you could almost say fun. I, I wanted I wanted it to happen. Mm -hmm. I wanted to check out what what these voices were saying to me. What what what, what is it that you're going to show me? And they were li like silk. They were very smooth through my tongue. I could feel them, sort of. And they were they were talking around me. And I had the feeling that, you know, do you know the moon landing people, the astronauts that landed, Neil Armstrong that landed on the, the, the moon. Do you know how they bounced? And there was, I, the gravity was less in there. I bounced a little. And I, I hovered a little bit more, and I could feel them hold, holding me, so, soft, soft as silk. They were soft as silk, and nothing was violent, nothing was bad. And they, do you know, like a museum when you go from one exhibit in a big room and you go to another exhibit, it was like that in these big glass wounds and I was they were showing me they showed me this is where my memory becomes very clear 
for a moment. Because up until that point, it comes a little fuzzy. I agree to it, but I don't know what God said. Mm. But I agree to it. Then I saw a machine. But this machine, this machine was, was organic. It wasn't metal. It was, it was, it, 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 it was part of the planet. And I know, I know this is this is where it really starts. And I saw the action. It was like an oil well when it goes up, up so, and down. So you're holding your fingers together and you're moving yeah. your eyes up and down. Uh, up and down. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an oil well, but it's also like a piston. Okay. And I'm, look, and I'm looking at it. As if it's balancing itself sort of thing. Um, no, it's just just going back and forth, but it's l- like an exhibit in a museum. You walk past it, and it's kind of in a bathtub, slightly below me, because I'm slightly hovering past it. And these voices are saying, their voices were were ch- ch- childlike. It, it was childlike, and they had very soft, soft pal- palatable accents. You could almost, you could dangerously say it was Welsh, Welshy. You know, when the, the Welshy valleys, it was a little like that, little mm-hmm. like it, and it was very rich in backslang. And it, they said it, I don't know what they said, and I couldn't understand what they said it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they s- explained their cells more clearer. Mm-hmm. And then I distinctly remember saying, oh, right, okay, it's like that, is it? Ah, okay. I I, I, I absolutely remember saying that. I, I, I understood what they meant by this machine, this, mm-hmm. this thing that's organic. Mm-hmm. It's part of the planet. And then I, they moved me to the next one because uh, it's like a like exhibits in a big big museum and the other one i don't know what i i could i couldn't work it out it was a collection of shapes and it was about the size of a of a car the, the, the other one the other one's quite big as well and this one was a collection of a triangle a shape a star a block and and that's, and I didn't know what I was looking at. I just could not comprehend what I was seeing. I, the mind just couldn't register what it, it was a collection of shapes and it was big. That's all I can say it was. Yeah. And this is when, this is when it started getting intense with them talking to me. It was like I'm feeling nervous now saying it. They were really, I, and this is not like violent or not, there was nothing malicious. There's nothing thing. It's like that lady said, they seemed to go up at gear, mm-hmm. explaining and talking to me. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sort of hovering there, going past you. And I remember I went to the next one to look at. And I, I, it was smaller, and it was lines with a ball going up and down and something spinning. At the, it was like a ping ball machine. It was going up and down. And again, this, they're explaining what it is. It's, mm-hmm. But it's organic. This is not metal. Mm-hmm. This is not a machine, as a, as a machine is made out of plastic and metal, copper, lead. Yeah. And I remember looking at the other exhibits and they were still there and I had traveled a lot and I could see the woods. Mm. And there was this, this intensity building. There was this, it was, it was, and I've said, do you know the Nazis, the Nazis with the Nuremberg drums? Have you ever seen that footage where there's like 200 drums beating and beating and beating and there's this building up of, of it and it felt like did did you eat you know did you eat dues australian aboriginal people or the tibetan tibetan trumpets it it was like that 
building up and building up and they were talking more and more and more to me. And that's when I started feeling uncomfortable. That's when it was like, hang on. It, I, I, I like, like I feel nervous now, as it were, I started feeling nervous then. It was too much. And I'm sort of hovering and I could see these, these things that they wanted to show me that they, they were part of the planet, these machines. They, they were organic because the planet and the planet is a living thing and these machines were part of it that piston did something to planet earth mm -hmm. and they were showing me that mm -hmm. and but uh, but by this time i'm sort of not not liking it anymore it's it's too much and it's building all the time and this is where this is this is where these voices and the, and the touching, the silk, nice touching. Everything's fine. Everything's got more and more. And they went into my mind. They went in, in to, into my head. And do you know your inner, inner voice? Yes. We, we all have that inner voice. Yes. They came in and, uh, and thought it was funny. In a, in a not, not in a cruel way. They just thought it was funny. But ha, ha, we can hear your voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Inside my inner voice. We they they've come into me. They've gone into me. They're yeah. reading my they weren't reading my memories, but they were reading that voice that's inside us. Yes. You know, but, but it has no sound, but it is sound. Mm. And I remember it being that's when I that's when I started to panic. And they were we, we had a game of like uh, we had a game of hide and seek. I was trying to hide my voice from them because I didn't want them inside my mind, in my head. And they thought it was funny to chase me around my, my mind with my voice. We can, and I try, and I remember it being, I, I, I sort of shook with it. it. It was, and I remember my hands, this hand, shaking with the, I, I can't control and your right hand yeah i remember my hand shaking i could feel it mm -hmm. i don't know what this hand was doing but this i and i was sort of do you know that uh clockwork orange when he sort of got the eyes and he's like ah, it started getting into that kind of lane yes and it was just building up this thing mm -hmm. the drums that or it was like drums it was like the aboriginal trumpet it was roaring up and they would thought it was so funny. They thought it was so funny that they were chasing me around my own mind. Mm. And I couldn't hide. I couldn't hide behind my teeth. I couldn't hide behind my... I tried everything to hide from them. I don't know where I was. I didn't know where to hide. They could re read. And it was very, very in, 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 uh, intrusive. Is that, is that the right word, intrusive? Absolutely, yeah. And I remember feeling... To this day, I trigger easy if people Gosh. come a little close. I, 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 I don't like it. Like if it's a child or something, I know that that's fine. Yeah, but a stranger, you don't, you don't do it to me. I don't, I don't, don't like that. And I remember, I remember there was this thing of there was just this utter panic. I, they were in me. These, because I, I certainly didn't know what they were, mm. uh, and. There was just, I remember my hand, I was sort of, and they were in me. And I remember saying, it, it was, I can't remember the exact thing, but it was stop, stop, no more, no more, enough, enough, no more. I, you, I cannot take no more. And it was over. It, it stopped. And I was stood outside the forest. Mm. I was just on the side of it. And... And it was over. I knew it was, it was over. I just knew it was over and I knew I could go. I could go. And I ran, I ran two or three steps and something compelled me to, to turn, to kind of stop, almost stop and look and, I, 
incredible picture, by the way. That is such a fun. T- I mean, are you, are you an artist of some sort? Yeah, I am. A, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a uh, comic book writer. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, oh, that's amazing. That's really. And I saw these two little beings at the sides of the forest, and I, I've written it down. They they were naked. And naked. It's clearly not a sexual thing. It's just that's how they were. I, that's the vibe. That two second, they were just simply naked because that's how they are. And I remember they had, the one was shorter than the other. They were literally at three foot high at the tops, and the one was a little lower. Mm-hmm. And it was there. That picture doesn't give justice to how they were closer. Mm-hmm. together and he was maybe a little taller okay uh, my sister has said he looks like a movie <laughs> so i was just I, thinking that i was just thinking that so i must have had uh yeah i i didn't know what a movie was i had to look at it she she teased me when i showed her a photo but yeah they had skinny legs uh skinny arms they were utterly white perfectly white bald they had beady little eyes bumpy little nose and a little mouth, maybe it was maybe with a lip. Mm-hmm. And I had the vibe, the best way to describe them, certainly in their face, was cherubs. Do you know cherubs of oh, yeah. angels? Mm. So they full- had that sort of bone structure. Because mm. I didn't really get it that well on that. I couldn't quite draw the picture. But it, they had a cherub bone structure to them. Yes. And... They looked at me and I looked at him and they weren't human. They were not human. They wouldn't, they were not. I don't, I know what I kind of, I'm pretty certain I know what they are now, but at the time I knew they weren't human. And the masks were off. They weren't acting like children anymore. They've been acting like children. Up to that point. As a child. Yeah. The age. I get the I get the vibe that they were acting my age. And I saw them and they were then something else. They were they were fake. Mm-hmm. They were something that was a hell of a lot older. And I turned mm-hmm. and I ran and I saw the face I did in the sand. And that's when I realized it was nighttime. Because I, I didn't quite register in the dark of the forest of the woods. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to say the one had a belly button. Hey, wow. So the little one. I, I remember the, the bigger one, the taller one, had a belly button. Uh, and the implications of that is, hey, hey, hey. Oh, but I, I remember mean, seeing he had a belly button. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I was... But I, I'm running now. I'm running full power. I, and I, it was nighttime. And I couldn't understand where the sun had gone. Why, why, why is it nighttime? It's, it's still daylight. It's tea time. And I couldn't understand that. I was really confused. And I remember in the night sky, as I, as I ran like a bat out of hell, I could see the twilight of the sun down, but you still get that light that sort of, goes across i remember that was there i remember seeing that Mm -hmm. and i remember thinking i am in so much trouble when i get back to that that, that, i'm getting a battery (laughs) and i remember i ran across the fur uh, field but because it was nighttime i struggled to find the path back because i'd never been there at nighttime before Mm -hmm. so i sort of ran and had to slow up and ran as fast as i could and Mm -hmm. And then I got back onto the road where I split up from my sister. And I remember feeling relief that I was near human things again. I was by humans again. There's tarmac. There's the, there's the pub. There's a street lamp on. I, I, I'm, I'm by humans again. And I ran up that hill and r- ran all the way up to the caravan. I burst in and my father had his coat on. And my mother was sort of shouting. She screamed up blue murder. Your father was just about to go out to look for you. Where the hell have you been? She was scared. She didn't know where it was. It, it was clearly 
I'm hedging my bets here. This was clearly quarter to 10 at night now. And he sort of grumbled, went, oh, well, next time, what's the bloody time, okay? Come back a bit earlier. He took his coat off and went to bed. Because uh, there was a back room to the caravan where my mom, my dad, and my two sisters were on the, the two sides of the sofa. And they were both fast asleep. Oh. And my mother sort of gave me a bollocking a bit more. You, you can't stay. She was, she was scared. She, oh. she was worried. I'd been gone for hours. Yeah. And so I, I sort of, okay, okay. I just sort of lied my way out. I don't know what I said. But I said, and like lights out. That's it, time for bed. No tea. Oh, God, I'm in the doghouse. And I remember I went on the floor. I slept on the floor. And I, I had a blanket around me. And that's, and I sort of set, settled down. Everything's quiet. The lights are out. Everything's dark. I can see the, the only light is the lamppost down the road that's kind of making everything a little bit orange. But I knew I was safe. I was by humans. Again, I had human beings, my family around me. And that's when, like, the sense of trauma came out. That's when the the shock hit me, and I sort of, I sort of shut my eyes, and it was still going on. You know, I was still, it you you can call it like a flashback. Yeah. And that's that's when I sort of half gave a Jesus, Mary, Mother of Christ, soul. The 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 shock hit me then. Of, uh, up until then, it had all been a mad rush. Everything was just happening in front of me. I was just reacting to things. And that was the, it stopped. I was back. And, and then I sort of kind of pulled myself together and said, okay, I didn't know what the hell happened to me. Absolutely not in my wildest dreams did I know what was going on, what, what, what had just happened. And the whole thing, felt like a minute and a half two minutes it was it wasn't long it was not long and i could not understand how it was not night time i got really confused with that and i i sort of pulled i had i just pulled myself together i just had to pull myself together and i remember the imagery of what, what i saw and then was really strong and i said no i gotta go to sleep now this is and mercifully, I went to, to sleep. I just managed to get to sleep. And then uh, I've had no nightmares from it or nothing to touch wood. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, to, we went down the bloody sand dunes, me, my father, my sister. And I remember seeing, seeing the face I had done, but the wind during the night had smoothed it over. Right. And I sort of... Went in the woods, sort of, oh, Christ, you be good. I kept my mouth shut. Nothing was, it's just normal. Everything was normal. Yeah. And I never told them that with that, and I never told a soul, because I simply could not attach it to anything. I, I, I remember in the 90s, sort of when you go into teenage years, when you read, when you read and read and read and you read books. And I remember, uh, the, I remember thinking, was it the fairies? Was, was it was it that? And I remember reading books and it was winged. It was F-A-I, not F-A-E. Mm. And I, it was only like the missing time that sort of slightly resonated with everything else. I thought, nah, that's unicorn stuff. And I thought, was it aliens? Nah, it wasn't aliens. And for years, I just sort of it. I had no, I had nowhere to put that. It was just one of one of those things. I never. And then I sort of bumped into your show on Facebook, and I thought, mm, okay, interesting title. Uh, looks a bit serious. Yes. Okay. And I remember I listened to a show, and your music played at the beginning. That you've that little soundtrack you got. Mm. And I remember thinking, "Ooh, that sounds familiar." Haven't I heard that slightly somewhere before? And then I remember you did an interview with the 
English fella who was in Ireland who got lost in the fog and it went very silent. Yes. I remember that one. I thought, okay, this is interesting. Okay, this is Fay. And I didn't I didn't know FAE. I did not know FAE. And then when I saw the fella tell his story about in Scotland where he saw a little mm. white thing, that was like that was a slap in the face. That yeah. was that yeah. was a slap in the face. It was like, oh my God, it was, it was Fay. It was Fay. That 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 one was the the, the trigger. That yeah. was when I knew what the hell it was. And that's the remote a, a remote encounter. I think that was the first. Yeah, trigger. but but he described what I kind of seen because I, I, I it just feel, felt it resonated. The whole your whole show, everything was kind of I was leaning into it. It was sounding all so familiar. It was it was feeling. I could feel yeah. it, and there was always a little voice. Tell her, tell her, tell her. Um, well, this is it. I mean, it's it's. You know, thank you <laughs> so, so much, first of yeah. all, for for sharing that. I am yeah, covered in goosebumps, and <laughs> I was, I'm just right there with you. The way that you're describing it, so vivid, yeah. you see it all. F- funny enough, yeah, it's a like strong that. memory. It's it's yeah. considering it's forty years old. Like I couldn't tell you the day I what I did the, that day. I couldn't tell you what I did the next day. But I know what happened there. Mm. I know what happened there. What What did you say to your um, parents? Do, do I you was just out playing. I was. I lied. I, uh, I, uh, because I like my. I haven't told my mother. She doesn't know this. She's too old. She's. Uh, she. She. She just wouldn't get it. She just wouldn't. It'd be too much for her. So I haven't told some family members. I haven't. I haven't told them. Because it's just simply too much. Mm. Um, I think we cross paths, the, me and the thing, we cross paths. Yeah. And I think they were doing what they do and they saw a little boy play it. Mm. And I think, and I've been thinking about this to say it, because it sounds pretentious. And it's, I'm on thin ice. I know I'm on thin ice when I say this. But you know, Stephen King, when. Danny and The Shining, I think they only contact people who's got a little bit of shining in them. Yeah. And I, I, that sounds pretentious as hell, which indicates oh, I'm so special, I got shine. But I think that's why only so certain people see them, not everyone, because if we'd all be seeing them. When there be reports all the time, I think, I think they pick up on the fact that some people have a more sensitive frequency, then they decide to say, we'll, t- we'll talk to them. I yeah, I mean, that. does was that very usual for you to have just gone off on your own playing and let your sister no, go on? No, I just fancied it. It, were, it wasn't like, oh, I heard something or felt it. It, I just fancied having 20 minutes my time. Mm-hmm. Um, you just play. We, we, were just, we were just inner city kids. I humbly say... I humbly say that I think I, I've got a little bit of shining and it they picked up on it. Yeah. And then, then we had, uh, uh, then that, that, that happened, whatever that was. You know, there's so many liminal aspects to the story, like the, the factors involved. We've got... Yeah. You know, the fact that you're going, first of all, from primary to secondary, primary to... to, to yeah, I was, I was, and I was not wise to the world. All right. I knew was uh, a, a small collection of friends friends, and family. That's yeah. all I knew. And I, all I knew was you don't talk to men. Yeah. As or, uh, or That was like, that's all I knew about the bad world. Mm-hmm. So when I heard voices, that was not men's voice that was children's voices I heard because yeah. I would have ran I would have ran mm-hmm. but um, yeah I was very innocent to the world at the time very innocent never been kissed by a girl <laughs> as it were I was very an innocent it sounds like it was kind of coming to the end of the day into it was early evening the, the sun was still very much in the sky it was late tea time yeah it was because I I'd only 
it took 10 minutes to go across the field then in because I was going away into the woods I was going into the into the countryside in a way yeah. so I had to play around and then decided to make a, a face mm. and then I heard mu- music and voices behind me coming from the woods did the face that you drew did it kind of bear any resemblance to no no yeah. it, I, I, I can't quite get it right now no. it's cherub they had cherub like faces like like um how, how do you say uh little people dwarfs yeah um, bone structure they had rounded very rounded bounded, but they were adults and they were male mm. they were female they were both male yeah many, many of them do look like that these kind of open round faces out of the of- I, they have maybe fatty lips maybe i'm not quite sure it was a thin or, uh, and a bump for a nose and beady little eyes. Mm-hmm. And they were old. They were old. The face that you drew in the sand, though, does that bear any resemblance to what No, no that was just playing. That was me. Okay. I, I think that was just, uh, no, that was no no connection. But I, I, they didn't have wrinkles. They had perfectly smooth skin. Yeah. But they were old. They were, they were old, as in, there are there was wisdom. They they weren't eleven years old. They they put on eleven year old voices for me. Mm. They they when they they want they wanted me to see them to show <laughs> who who would be the voices who would be, who had been. They wanted me to look background and look at them. Yeah, I get that impression as well because I was going to go hell for leather. I was I was going to run. And why the hell would I want to slow down and turn that one? Because I think in some way they made me do it. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to see them mm-hmm. for that second and a half. And then I, and then I ran. But yeah, I get that impression as well. They wanted me to have a memory of them. That's, I mean, hearing you say that just strikes such a chord with me, and I won't, I won't go on about my <laughs> experience again. Well, it's fine, it's fine. But, but that is exactly what I walked away with. This, you this, had the same feeling, was it? Oh, uh, yeah. Wanted, that, that is what I walked. Know, but you know, but I know, but I know, but you know. Yeah, but, that he wanted me to see him. Yeah, that was the yeah. one sure thing that I walked yeah. away with. That he wanted me to see him, and. What do you think their message was to you in all of what they were showing? What do you think they were trying to get across to you? At the time, I felt totally confused. Mm-hmm. I I felt traumatized by it. If I'm, if I'm uh, certainly back back in the caravan, mm. and I carry that li- little little bit of trauma to this day, where people don't like dentists is hell on earth for me. Oh. Dentist is I. I'll sweat the chair out. It's mm-hmm. still because they're close to you, and yeah. and I don't like people going. Get, and I don't like people sort of um just getting a bit too close. I don't. I, I don't. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I, I, and children, like I said, if I know you or not, that's fine. That's not mm-hmm. total strangers. Strangers can't do it. They want. They wanted me. To know, this is like reflective. I've unpacked it. Mm-hmm. And I've, this last two weeks, I have thought about it more than any other time in my life because I wanted it to get ready for this evening. Yeah, I wanted to get it right mm-hmm. because it's important. They're like the caretakers of the planet. They're like groundsmen. They look after her, the the guy, the planet, our our planet. Yes. They look after her and they wanted to show me these organic machine like things that help the planet because it's living like our bodies are living. Mm-hmm. And they, I don't know why they, they wanted me to know it, but they want, they want to tell us collectively. Yes. Yes. Collectively. It, it ain't about me. It ain't, it, it, I'm, it ain't about me. No. It's about us as a people on a planet that's, a, that's living. It's just not science. It's just not science. It's a bit. It's a bit more. If only it was that simple. Yeah. I get. I, I, I unpack that. I didn't get that impression at the time, mm-hmm. 
but I'm packing. Why are they showing me machines, mm. organic machines? Because I had the impression they weren't metal when I looked at them. Yeah. And uh, why am I in? Why am I in rooms that are uh, like glass? What, 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 why is it happening? What, and, I, and I remember when I went into the into the woods, it was slightly up a ramp. I, I sort of went up, uh, mm-hmm. but I was. Uh, but I, there was also a feeling of weightlessness. I was hovering around in there yeah as well there was like moonwalking mm-hmm. i was kind of doing that and going around mm-hmm. and they were they were holding me very gently they were holding me up and there was two of them but at the time i thought there could have been four or five i i i sort of i i just did they weren't they weren't nasty they weren't horrible to me they weren't anything but they got so excited by what they were telling me they, they, it, and i can't it's really hard to to, to that feeling of oh, this are awesome like the didgeridoos like 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 a hundred of them of them going off all mm-hmm. the, the war of it mm-hmm. and it was and they were talking and getting excited but they couldn't help themselves it's like that lady said we, we, yes. we saw him on the chimney that resonated they couldn't help themselves mm-hmm. they got excited by what uh, by what they do because mm-hmm. that's what they do they work with the planet they do something to the planet they help it because we're on a living planet and they loved it they were laughing their heads off with it they got into my mind they, they just went in yeah. And they thought it was so funny they could hear my inner my inner voice. They thought it was so funny, and he chased me around my own my, my my own head, like hide and seek. And I couldn't hide. I couldn't hide from him. When it was enough, when I sort of I think I might have put my hands up. I'm not I'm not quite sure. But I remember saying, "Enough, no more, no more. I can't." And that's when I found myself stood up outside. And and all the colours became rich again, and gravity kicked in. The sense of I'm back. I'm not. I'm not in there. I'm. I've, I've taken a step out, yes. and I can go. And d- d- did it feel when you were in what sounds like? A, I mean, I hesitate to say it, but it it sounds a little like a craft. Particularly if you're thinking about the kind of these were rooms. He was definitely rooms. Room. I saw the edge. I saw the ceiling. Yes, the ceiling of it. And it was about 20 foot, there was glass, they were like glass rooms. Yes. And it was an exhibit, like a museum, they were showing me these machines. Were they sort of like membrane or glass, do you think? Gla- glassy, yeah. very glassy, And I, but I could see the woods. It was like fo- photo with the ring. Yeah. You put it on, you're, you're still there, but you're also there. Yeah. You're, 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 it's, both, it's happening at the same time. And it was very... It was very washed out, very watery. Yeah, on the outside. Very bluey. It was. It was maybe Blue. a bit bluey. Inside Blue. where you were, or yeah. outside? Inside, inside, inside. It was bluish, blue, okay. bluey. And they were these machines were big, and they were connected to the planet in some way. Mm-hmm. They had something to do with the planet. They were helping the planet, and they were the guys for the job. I should have bowed to them. When I left, you know, when you go to church, you bow. I, I, they were holy. But that, that, that's the impression I get now when they wanted me to see them at the oh. end. They weren't eleven year olds. They, they, they were. They were like you could. You could say they were like. I had you, my guess. You know, taking a chance. They were hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of years old, but they were smooth, smooth, smooth as porcelain. amazing it's really amazing and it sounds like you know when i talk about these beings it feels like meeting the divine yeah oh yeah i should have bowed. i should have bowed. i should have and i i just didn't know what i was looking I, it was all too much for 11 year old it was all too much it, it's it's an awful lot and the and it sounds very traumatic having yeah, it was at the time yeah it's, when, when they came in in into your very being and yeah, showed you what yeah. they could do yeah they came into my mind yeah. I took, are you 
mind reading is real because I've had my mind read. Yeah. By, yeah. By, 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 they were reading my mind. And they thought it was so funny that they could hear me arguing with them. Don't, don't, don't go, go away, go away. No, no, not in here, not in here. No, 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 no. Mm. It was fast when it was all getting too much for me. Yeah. I, I couldn't handle them. It was all too much. I can understand. I wanted out. I wanted that. Well. That was it. Party, party's over. When you're talking about your hand, sort of seeing your hand yeah. shaking, and was, I'm thinking, which, yeah, it was uh, my whole. I was tw- twitching. I was, I was, I, I. It's it's really hard to get over the roar of it. Yeah. The sheer excitement. It was. Oh my god! It was. The ultimate, the roar of it. They loved it. They loved it. It were, They were. I. I. I can't express it in words. And like what this. What I've explained this evening to you is like eighty-five mm-hmm. percent correct. The words have kind of helped along. There's fifteen, twenty percent. I just can't say in words. Across. I can't get it across. Like that machine, the the middle one. I don't know what the hell I saw. So there was the first one, which was kind of like an oil... Piston. Yeah, like an oil big piston. And then the, the second one, which is more kind of a collection big, of shapes of some sort. Like... Big lumpy thing, yeah. Yeah. And then the third one was like a pin pin Pinball. So something she was back and forth. And was it... What kind of material could you liken it to if you... If you... Organic. It was, it, was, it was made of the planet. So it, it was made of... It was made of... It had a funny colour to it, blue, blue. Everything was a little bluey, tinty bluey. Oh, okay. Every everything in the room was tinty bluey, mm. a little bit. I could still see the woods, and it was made out of clay. Mm-hmm. It was made out of like an organic mushy clay that had been moulded into these shapes. Mm-hmm. Certainly, the piston one. That's my strongest memory mm-hmm. when, when I first. There was this piston going up and down, and there was a, like a ball in the middle. Something was twisting inside the game, but it wasn't metal. And what, what do you think the effect of these machines had on the earth? What was your impression of? of it helps. It helps. Helped. It helps. Okay. It, it's like our lungs help us to breathe. <laughs> it's our sure. heart helps us to move blood. It's yeah. like that. It's it's not exactly like that, but they. They help the planet in some way. That is something that I didn't know it at the time, but it's something I've considered. I've just unpacked it and I've I've mm-hmm. tried to be very stoic about it. Yeah. Where you mm-hmm. don't want to start saying it's this, you don't want to start saying it's that. Were you changed in any way afterwards as a as a little boy, as a person? Were you changed? Well, well, this goes back to the to the little bit of the shining. Mm-hmm. He says humbly. I, I, I've seen ghosts as well. I, I see ghosts when I was a child all the time. All the, all the, all the bloody time I'd see them. Before this? Uh, ish, but certainly afterwards. Okay. Afterwards. I, haven't seen, I haven't seen one in about, in about four years. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would. So that's I, recent. That's the most recent one, yeah. Recent. yeah. I'd see spirits. But they, they, I... Uh, uh, or here, I'd hear them as well. I, there was a few times walking home from a pub, I'd tell them to shut up. So it's like Claire audience sort of oh, hearing. I don't know. So you've got telepathy, which is what the beings seem to be. Yeah, I think they picked up on that. That's that's the only, like I'm trying to stay humble here because I don't want to, because it's about us, not me. I think we've all got it, but yeah. more for some people are, simply switched on it but just mm-hmm. switched on a little bit more and you were on the beach did when they first called to you do you feel that was out loud or do you feel that was that you heard that within you bit of both right it, yeah. bit of both it, it you, a half and half it's mm-hmm. hard to say it's yeah. hard, but I remember it must have been some sort of physical thing because I remember that I turned around Anyway, yeah, so it was coming from somewhere. From the woods. It was coming oh. from the woods. And it was very rappy, rappy. It was like rap. It was like a jingle jangle. 
it was children's voices. Come, come in, come see. We want to show you something. Come here. Oh, it's you, it's you. Yeah, God, yeah, it's him, it's him. Come in, come in. And I thought it was children from the site, of, of the caravan site. Did, did you get a sense at any point that you recognised you had there was any kind of sense of familiarity with them? No, no. Okay. I, I, I believe we crossed paths. Yeah. I was um, a little boy out playing. And they knew they could talk to me. So they talked to me. But they did. And do you get the sense that there were any other children there? No, I was, it was complete by myself. That, but it was one of the reasons why I went down there because the site was so quiet. It was yeah. early evening. It's a Sunday evening where everyone's having their tea. This is it. A lot of people have gone home. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to chill out for 20 minutes sort of have a little adventure of my own by myself yeah I mean I think you know the other kind of liminal factors there one of them is that the it's Sunday and that sort of shift this is the kind of there's a real special quality to a Mm. Sunday because everything as you say sort of slows down people are usually with their families it was quiet the whole area was quiet down everyone was doing their thing and that was the reason I sort of I'll go across the fields go into the sand I play I didn't want to go into the forest I wanted to play on the sand dunes by the forest mm-hmm. and my intention was just to play in, play on the sand because it was the woods and then you go to some more sand dunes and then you hit the beach and the sea absolutely and not only that but you're between the land and the sea too yes. you know, I think yeah. that's so another yeah. kind of liminal liminal boundary or threshold between yeah. the sea and land yeah there was a definite Certainly when it was over mm. and I was outside of the woods, there was a definite, that's in there and I'm out in the real world again. Mm-hmm. It was, and it happened quick as well. And did it? Did you end up, when you came out, did you end up where you'd gone in, if you know what I mean? Did no. you end- oh, yeah, good question. Uh, no, I came in a little further down the way and sort of walked through the woods looking at these things and slightly came out another way. Okay. Yeah, for, mm-hmm. yeah, good question. Yeah. Yeah. And another weird thing, which I never knew, and I've written it down because I really tried to unpack it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't thirsty and I never went for a pee when I went to bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and I've been gone for hours. Mm. And that was another thing I never considered before. I don't know if it means anything, but I. I, I just went to bed. I, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't thirsty, and I didn't go for a pee. You, you mentioned you thought there might have been potentially some missing time because of the the fact that you felt you were. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely missing. Yeah, because it was daylight, and then it was nighttime. Mm-hmm. So, and I've, I've, I think for you, using the summer because we're kind of in the summer now. We're kind of close to when it happened. Oh yeah. Um. It gets dark now with like quarter to ten. Mm-hmm. So I must have been in those woods for for at least two and a half hours. Yeah. And it felt like a minute and a half, two minutes, two minutes of the push. But the real the reality, I, I must have been in there for at least two and a half hours, three hours, three hours. What what do you think happened? This is about us, not me. Mm-hmm. And they I've made a decision to talk to people as best they can about the planet, about sometimes they can't communicate it so right. They're not very good. They're completely on a different wavelength to us, a different one. So we get miscommunication. I think that I don't think they have the same left left brain, right brain as we do. I think their, their, oper- their brain is operating uh, in a different way, but they want us to they, they want to talk to us but and i would say this is this is the things i've been thinking about mm-hmm. i would say our agents and our agents as i mean in stonehenge mm-hmm. new new grange tinkers word you know they had more communication with them mm-hmm. back in the day ten thousand years ago there was a lot more Fay activity and human activity in a controlled environment. It's interesting. Why I don't know. Maybe 
let me, this is the thing. I'm trying to stay humble. I'm trying to try. I think the stone circles were a lot more to do with the faith. Mm-hmm. I think that, 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 and I think they in turn had a lot more to do with the planet. Mm-hmm. Those machines I saw could have been what the stones did years ago. Some kind of function. There was a fun- there was a function for the planet and the Fey know how to do it and the humans used to help them. Yeah. There was <laughs> some, there was something going on and a broke a, 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 a break happened. Mm. And do you, got a, do you get a sense of what that break would have been? I mean, it, um, it's fine civilization. If... Civil, we, 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 we decided we gave up on our link to Earth, mm. to, our, to our roots. To, to, and I feel so dry in the mouth. I feel so... <laughs> it, I feel, I truly believe that the Fae and certain kinds of people, you could say the Druids and all that, and the had more communication yeah and there was some form of collective working together for the planet and the humans left we broke away and followed follies and we fought swords and we fought spears and we rage war with each other i think that and they're trying because i believe and I believe in their own humble little way, the Fey are trying to reconnect with humans, but they don't know how. All they connect can connect is to ones who are a little shiny. I, I, because I'm... the communication is so you just it's not connecting yet. I think that's happening. I think that's why you're sharing of this experience is so important and I am a hundred percent with you that I feel we definitely did have innately this connection with yeah definitely, definitely. and it's, it's interesting because the what they were showing you it's just occurred to me and I don't know what you think about this but it's almost like showing you what has separated us from them because in the first instance you've got industrialization potentially yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the second instance, you've got, you know, ra- um, logic, rationality, you know, these shapes, things are a certain way and these are what they are, you know, that oh, kind of like way of seeing the world where everything's kind of very neat and tidy uh, in, in shapes. Yeah. Athe- atheism's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, w- w- I, and I think, it's it's like a fantastic concept when you break it down. It's like, really, I only went on holiday with my parents, <laughs> you know, and I, I think they're trying to say hello as well with these meetings over the years. They're trying and they just, because they don't like the cities, they know don't go near the bright lights, don't go near cities, you don't, they stay on their safe ground which is nature, which is the woods, which is the fields. You could call it what you want, but it ain't near the cities. You won't, There's no phase in the phase in London. They were all on the outskirts, maybe. Or, or so it, it seems crazy. I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know, I'm getting run, I'm getting run away with myself. But... No, I mean, maybe that's in meshes because when I have spoken to people who have had encounters in cities, they're really? Like, really? Okay. Yeah, much more few. Oh, well, I shot that one down. <laughs> it do happen. But no, I think it's okay. more about, you know, their message for you. And I think that there's definitely... I don't think it was for me. No, no, no. I, think, I don't mean that in that way, that it's just for you. What I mean is that by being able to tell you these messages, oh, right. like yes. you're... You're the you're their mouthpiece, if you like. You're yes, you're, yeah. you're somebody that can then come here and tell me that share yeah. this and with that's why that they made me look at them. That's exactly. why they showed themselves to 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 snap rubber stamp it. Yeah. And it I don't know, it's it's you have to be careful where you go because you could end up talking a load of Well yeah, we don't yeah, know. Yeah. I think it's yeah. I think it's okay to kind of the thing is that 
when you kind of explore this it unpacks it could, yeah it is and, and things come up and it's fine you know people talk about people understand the imagination in different ways but you know the greeks had this idea that you know within our imagination is so, so expansive and that it, it kind of is a creation in itself and that it it doesn't come from nothing like it comes from somewhere yeah, absolutely. So oh yeah it's wholly itself feelings, yeah. you know that we're, we're talking about and describing and explaining they are coming from somewhere so i think it kind of what the way that i see it is sometimes it's it's actually helpful to sort of just allow because sometimes yeah. we can go in a certain direction and then we think oh no that doesn't feel right but sometimes we kind of go in a direction and it's like oh yeah there's a kind of flow here and it and and it feels right but I'm mm. really interested in kind of what how this 11 year old boy then kind of coped with being in the world in this kind of physical reality after that I because... buried it actually buried it mm. actually dug, dug a hole and threw it in and threw the soil back on I told no one no one no no one at all because I how, how do you how do you class that? Where where where? Oh, what what pigeonhole do you put that in? I, did I think it was I was there aliens? Probably around the X Files thing. I thought maybe. Did you watch the X Files when you were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone did. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, it's brilliant. I, I. How did you feel watching that? It, it wasn't aliens. I I always knew that as well. It was that's. I all that was the thing that always sort of kept it alive within me. I knew it wasn't that mm -hmm. it wasn't aliens. It was something else, but I didn't know what it was. And I remember, like I said, when you go through your reading when you're 19 and you think you can read, you know everything. And I read the library, and I picked up the fa the fairy books. Sorry, and it wasn't resonating. Missing time, and the rest dancing for hours. I thought, oh, I, I want dancing. And no one else seemed to be shown stuff. Right. And it didn't resonate very well with me, to be honest. The, the fairy stuff wasn't. And then it's literally fast forward to 2000. What? I don't know what you were in 2004. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2003. And I bump into his Facebook group as run by Joe Hickey Hall. And it sort of went, hmm. And it was literally because of your group that it started being F-A-E. So F -A -E. In, do you mean 2023? Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. It was years and years later. I just sort of buried it. I just didn't didn't bother with it because there was, what is it, what is it, not so much more what does it matter. I don't know what happened to me. I don't know what, what that was. And then with your podcast show and just general I, I sort of tracked it, started revealing it, the jigsaw pit pieces started coming together. And this is it, because I, I think, you know, you're you're not, you're definitely not alone with this, as, you, as you've heard from other people's stories. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. resonating. To, you, you, and you, I, I have a responsibility to say something because they gave me two minutes of their time. I, I, I feel I responsibility. that. Had you always been able to draw like that as well, even as a... Um, yeah, yeah, I've always drawn, yeah. I've always been arti artistic. I still am a, like, um, I'm a comic book writer by day and what was it, by and by night, and just to keep my dream alive. But, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. so cool. What, what kind yeah. of, um, what kind of uh, you know, stories do you write about in your I write, comic? I'm doing at the moment, I think of... I always go into the occult and I, I lean into it because yeah. I've had a history of seeing spirits. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I right, like I'm doing a script now. I'm literally doing that is just cool. starting our script now. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're releasing it. Uh, That's amazing. But I've always had a. I've always written about. People have having extraordinary events happen to them. Yeah. I, I, I've always been drawn to that because it's happened to me. And I, 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 what's it, the French got a word for ad, the, the way a writer writes? Adieu, the, the adieu, 
I can, it begins with a, a style you write in. And I have a tendency to write about characters having extraordinary events. Yeah. Because I, 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 no matter how deep I buried it, it still bubble, bubbles up, it resonates. And it certainly has this year has been, uh, this over this year, has, it, 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 it's, 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 it's come out. It's come mm-hmm. out. And it's not going back in. It, it's really interesting because I just released an episode with um, another comic artist called yeah, Justin Thomas. You yeah. saw that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, like you, you know, the, the experiences that he had really tied into his his work and his performance yeah. art. Yeah, it, uh, it does. It's not, it's not, it's like, Four times out of ten, I, I write other stuff. I'm, I'm always writing, always. But four mm-hmm. times out of ten, like uh, well, with issue three, she meets the Queen of the Fairies, F A R. Oh. So I've, I've, and I've written, I've written a screenplay about the Fae. To because I felt uh, because no one's talking about it. No, no one's. It, it's like a social taboo. It's amazing, you know, because I can't go into the pub and say I had a fairy. Mm. I can't go into. I can't tell half the people I know. I get the sack. <laughs> well, I think I'll be extreme saying, but uh, it's socially not acceptable to have this conversation. But yeah. yeah, I find, I find you might have, and with the other group, which is very good, which are uh, hair in the Hawthorne. I've got a terrible memory. <laughs> I think you, I think you guys are stumbling onto something. Mm. It's been going on for hundreds of years. It's F A, F A E, not F A I. There's this. It's been going. I think they've been trying to talk to us for centuries. Do you, do you want to talk about your kind of understanding of the difference between F A E and F A? Yeah. Well, one's got wings, and <laughs> one's. To use, but I remember him saying, "And Neil, interdimensional being." Uh, but I think the one is a bit unicorny. It's uh, for me personally, no disrespect, but um, I think fairies are, are the imaginationary offshoot of how humans try to cope with the fate. So they lightened it up into a more palatable form, because that form of Little bald cherub looking beings. It's too That's, much. It's too much. It's all a bit. Yeah. Yes. And these things that are sort of not things, I shouldn't say, I, sh- I should be more respectful. Uh, these things, <laughs> I said it again, yeah. sorry. Um, these beings are that are deeply connected to the planet. They are deeply, deeply connected to it. <laughs> So, I mean, why do you um, think um, that we're kind of like looking? Do you think there's a connection in why we're talking about this now and why? Um, and then I think it's have. the internet. I think the internet is joining white people, white places, white conversations. Because we, to do to do what do you? Because if because if you had said this conversation would have happened with this technology that I'm looking at now, as you look. In the 90s, I would have laughed. Mm. I would have dis- dismissed it. Mm. This mm. is reality. I think I, I think we're on a massive change. We're on a we're in a flux. We're in a big ass flux. Mm. And I think I think our, the world it, will change at the end of the century. It will be a completely different world. This episode, we talk further about what our guest feels is in store for the world in the future. We also look further at how he feels about his experience 
and how he makes sense of it. It's an extra full hour of conversation and that is available on Patreon. The detail in the story is really quite spectacular. There are so many different aspects to it, uh, which I'll try and cover here. But initially, I'm thinking about aspects of liminality that crop up in this encounter. It's his summer holidays between the two terms. And of course, he's going off to start secondary school when he returns to school. That's always a big shift for us as, as kids. He's between the land and sea, and he's not in his usual home either. He's in, you know, he's in his caravan. He's also in woods at the edge of the beach. It's around twilight, and it's that shift from Sunday to Monday. I think what is really pivotal, he was doing something he loved, that thing that he gives the world. And that has cropped up a number of times now, particularly with children, that they'll have these experiences when they're entirely involved with something that means a lot to them. And as I mentioned in the discussion, it seems like it's possible perhaps that we reach a point within ourselves of maybe call it centeredness, maybe call it alignment with what we are doing here on earth, our physical selves going about our business and our spirit, the spirit that inhabits this physical vessel, this body, when we come into this particular lifetime. And my belief is that we have a job to do within this lifetime. And so maybe there's kind of an aligning that happens and that enables us to kind of cut through the material and access something deeper, more meaningful. In any case, it's worth noting that this has cropped up a number of times for our guests, that this is the doorway, the access point. Our guest hears jingling, rhyming voices. So the kind of audio aspect of it also cropped up a number of times. And that kind of strange bell-like sound that seems to be associated with fey beings and with entering other worlds. The other thing that happened, which ties into what Jenny Randalls refers to as the Oz factor, everything went quiet as he entered the woods and he felt as if he was in a different dimension. It's quite amazing that he was shown these machines He's not able to say exactly what they were. I imagine it would be possible, potentially, to access that through meditation, if he decided to do so. But he was quite clear that they seemed mechanical, but also organic, that they were trying to show some kind of function to him, as if he were walking through some kind of exhibit of course, it came, became too much for the little boy when we don't know whether it was the part where he felt them enter his mind, which is really intrusive. And I was trying to liken that to a sense of when you feel infinite and that you're not separated from anything. And I wonder if that's what he experienced or whether it was something else. We can't say. But to this little boy, it was very traumatic and you can understand why. But the good news is that at that point when he said no, he withdrew himself from the experience. He had felt himself in as if he were in a different dimension and he felt that these beings were somehow holding him up because he was weightless. It did sound as if he had entered some kind of craft, the fact that he had the sense of going up a ramp, but he feels that they were not alien-type beings. And this, of course, brings us back to this, where the fairies and aliens are the same beings. And, of course, this really ties into Jacques Vallée's passport to Magonia, 
that they are are indeed the same and that what we used to see as fairies or what we used, what we read about in fairy folklore are actually our modern day aliens personally i believe that they are different i've never as far as i'm aware as far as i can remember i've never had a an alien experience right now i feel that they are two different sorts of beings but what do i know <laughs> i really don't know i guess the fact that he feels that they definitely weren't aliens and that they definitely were fae uh, aligns with the idea that they they felt not alien but something something more fae and of course we don't know what fae are it seems as if however he did have some lost time and he's not able to account for that but i really enjoyed hearing his sense his idea of how time speeds up for these beings compared to our realm and i could really feel the relief that once he said no and he was outside in the forest again albeit in a different place that he was able to feel when he when he got near human things again he mentioned being near human things again and that was quite striking i also find it interesting that he found the facebook group which just cropped up on his social media that he found it at the right time when he was maybe ready to look at that again and is that because now is the time that he has to talk about it well he has talked about it and we're talking about it now so if everything is always as it should be as we're told it's hard to believe sometimes when horrific and awful things are happening but that's what we're taught then maybe he was meant to speak about that now the strange blue light also is an aspect that comes up again and again in these encounters there is an episode called illumined communion there have been other episodes where blue, the colour blue, has been quite important. Not least the recent episode with the blue being. And the little blue man of Studden Common is another blue being. He was inside some glass rooms, which again puts me in mind of being in a craft. And I had spoken with Todd Groob, who had an experience like this before, where he was taken aboard something and he described that as being not quite alien, something more akin to Fae. Wasn't able to pin down exactly what it was. But he similarly said you could see through to the outside as if it were some kind of membrane. Our guest also mentioned that he felt that these beings were holy. And I, th I think that is worth pointing out because for many of us, we do feel something about these beings that they are divine in some way. And he notes that he just can't express some of this in words. It's just impossible because we just don't understand enough. And it's, it's very difficult to place into words something that you have experienced within another realm that doesn't quite fit our understanding of the way the universe functions. It puts me in mind of people that go when they have DM, experiences with DMT they're not fully able to explain what it's like where they go and what they experience because we don't quite have the framework of understanding yet to explain. I'm so intrigued by these mechanical objects, particularly how the piston seemed to be helping the planet. And if anyone has any ideas about that, I'd really, and I'm sure he would also love to hear those. I wonder if he could draw them, although I don't know if he has enough firm, clear memory of exactly what they look like to be able to, to do that. And I, I realise that when something is so far away, sometimes it's just not possible to provide an image of an experience because it just doesn't fit. So again, it just doesn't fit into a 2D representation. He really had the sense that this is about all of us and not just him. 
and he repeated that a number of times throughout and the fact that they just want to talk to us and many of us researchers feel driven you know by what we're doing and we all started around the same time my feeling is that that's not a coincidence something is shifting they want to help us they seem to want to talk to us it seems like now is the time and as our guest said he is of the mind that our ancestors had more communication with these beings from my own experiences i believe that to be true I can't know that, but that feels right to me. Our guest says, this year it's come out and it's not going back in. I have to talk about it. There's an urgency. And this is why I do feel that whether you have had one of these experiences or not, you know that there's a truth within you that needs to come out now. With all of the pressures and strains of the modern world often it just feels like it's going to be impossible to do what you really want to do and be who you really are but I can tell you that if you take steps towards that you'll find that it it builds its own momentum and it does become possible and I feel that we're really supported in this at this time so maybe if we too do the things that we really love that we feel driven to do we'll find that deep place within ourselves where we also can meet the divine and we may also change our perspective, which is what is needed. And I think that's already happening. And I think the fact that you're listening to this also shows that you probably have changed your perspective. I know that I have. I know that I held my story for a long time before I decided that now was the time to share And so, in the words of my teacher, Martin Broffman, and I've said this many times before, but I always say it, trust your trip. Trust where you're going. Trust what you're doing. The other thing he always used to say was, I love where I am. I love who I'm with. I love what I'm doing. And if you can't say one of those three things, maybe you need to change your perspective. Well, maybe it's time for you to make some changes in your life. And now is definitely the time. This next part of the year, the second half of the year, astrologically, is going to be phenomenal. And there are going to be huge shifts happening. For those interested in that, finding more out about that, I would highly recommend watching Pam Gregory on YouTube. But from me to you, dear listener, hold tight and do those things that you love. Know the things that really keep you feeling separate and alone and instead reach out to those around you who love doing the same things that you do, whatever that is. There will be a community, whether it's a physical community where you live or whether it's online. Find your community and step forward into this new way of being, this new perspective. We are all here at this time for a reason and we have each other. Much love and always remain curious.